Grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this service of worship. Those who are with us as guests this day, we're delighted that you are here. And I ask that everyone would find the red friendship pad that's at uh, the center pews there and fill that in and pass that along uh, for those that are, uh, that with whom you share a pew. Those who are joining us by live stream, we also welcome you uh, here worshiping with us this day. I want to call your attention to several things that are in our Abbott and Presbyterian life. Uh, please note that uh, our youth retreat is coming up in September, but the deadline for registering for that is this next Sunday. And so uh, there's information about uh, how to get that in by next Sunday, so we encourage our youth and their families to take note of that. Coming up this week is um, the final conversation of this particular book that the uh, anti-racism team has been discussing with others on Tuesday evening at 7.30 in the parlor. Uh, but following this worship service at uh, 11.15, uh, the anti-racism team will be gathering for their monthly meeting. You're invited to join with them. I want to uh, also note that our uh, music ministry, that uh, much of which has been on hiatus during the summer, will be uh, getting back in gear. And you see the schedule for all the various bell choirs, uh, vocal choirs of all ages that are listed there. Uh, I hope that you'll consider uh, where you might fit in on that list. One other thing is that two weeks from today is Homecoming Sunday, and we look forward to joyful gathering, hopefully outdoors as weather allows. We uh, plan for there to be live jazz music that will be there. Uh, there's also um, going to be a moon bounce for the, for the children, and uh, sounds like there's going to be a dunk tank as well, uh, and that might be used to raise some funds for our mission partners. And so uh, I hope that you will uh, plan to stay that day. There's gonna be plenty of fun food out there and opportunities to hear more about various ministries of this congregation. So I hope that you'll plan to be here um, that day, and we'll all uh, be concluding those events in time for folks to um, get home for the first Eagles game. So, Don Brooks has our um, moment for mission uh, at this time. Thank you, Kirby. This is a message for all of you James Beard and Julia Child wannabes. Uh, Mission Council has a service project available for you to kind of uh, test your culinary skills on September 17th at Face to Face Mission. And there's gonna be an opportunity for you to work with the almost world-renowned Chef Al in the Face to Face Kitchen. Or if you prefer, you can help serve supper that same day following um, the kitchen preparation. So there are going to be two sessions. One is going to be from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the kitchen, of which we have four spots available. And the second one is serving in the dining hall. Right after that, from 11.30 to 2.30, or you can do both if you prefer. We have four spots for both of them. And if you're interested, see me after the service. I'll be back by the camera. Now let's say that you're busy that day, but you still want to stretch your culinary expertise. On uh, September 25th, if you can put jelly on a piece of bread or peanut butter on a piece of bread, we need you. So we're bringing back the peanut butter and jelly project Sunday the 25th after the 10 o'clock service in the parish hall. We're going to be putting together 100, maybe hopefully more, uh, grab and go bags for, again, face to face peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a snack, a juice box, things like that. We did this a couple of months ago and it was very successful. Everyone's invited, young and old, parish hall, 
after the 10 o'clock service on Sunday the 25th. So we hope to see you at either or both of these Mission Council opportunities. Thank you. Please stand as you are able and join with me in the call to worship. Our lives are connected to many things. But it is in you, O oh God, that we live and move and have our body. Christ is the vine, we are the branches. Apart from Christ, we have no life within us. The source of our fruitful living is that connection. Relying on the Holy Spirit, we worship the one who is the face. May be seated. God's grace offers us forgiveness for what we have done in the past, but also opens the way for us to live lives that are more in keeping with God's will going forward. Please join with me in our prayer of confession. We give thanks, O oh God, that we have been grafted into Christ to be branches on a vine which bears the loveliest of all the fruits of earth. Yet we confess that all is not well with the way we live. We have allowed anger to lead to alienation. Our words have been used for other purposes than to build up. The ways we live have produced little fruit. Lead us so we may imitate your ways and walk in your love.
God's grace and life flows through us, restoring us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. It is a great joy to be at peace with Christ and to share a sign of that peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. My friends Isaac and Jacob are here. So glad. Well, I know that your school doesn't start for another week, right? But tomorrow, actually, a lot of our friends from church, their school starts. Did you know that? So I've been thinking about those friends in Upper Moreland and, let's see, in Cheltenham, and I think there's one other school district, but anyways, they're starting tomorrow, and I know they've been excited and maybe nervous. Are you starting to get excited and nervous about school? Mixed, Mixed not nervous. So I bet this last week maybe you found out your teacher. Did you find out your teacher? Was that exciting? Yes. The teacher you wanted, that's always good, not the scary teacher that's like really mean and gives lots of book reports. Oh, okay. She got married, so it was an old like switcheroo and very exciting. I love that. So when you're getting ready for something really important, really big, like going back to school and a new teacher and seeing your friends, what are some of the ways you feel as you're getting ready for that? What are some of the things that you're thinking about that you're feeling while you're getting ready for a big important day? We talked about nervous a little, excited a little. Are you a little bit sad that summer's almost over? Yeah, me too, actually. I really like summertime. I mean, I know once we get going into fall, it's beautiful and great. But it's kind of also sad to leave this kind of different pace behind and go back to hard work and early mornings and lots of homework and reading extra stuff. As you're getting ready for something new, if you're feeling especially negative, like sadness or even um, worry, I always think it's really important to focus on that thing which feels the best about it. What's the best part of going back to school? What do you think you would choose? There's a lot of good things, right? I'll give you some options. Having a computer, that's a good thing that you bring to school. Have you not had one yet? Is this the year you get your computer at school? Yeah. 
but you didn't get to bring it home. So now you get to bring home the computer. That's a great thing to look forward to. What are some other things? How about seeing your friends again that you might not have seen? Having um, new and harder things to learn that you like. What do you like to learn? Oh, I know. What do you like to learn? So last year we got to do physics. You did? did a little tiny bit? Uh-huh. So do you get to do more physics this year in fifth grade? I hope so. Or math, harder math. I know you like math, and I know you like history. Because if you don't know this, if you would like to talk about, is it World War II that you are very interested in, or just kind of all sorts of different kinds of things in history? Yeah, come talk to Isaac, because he's amazing. It's the same in the way that we think about going back to school and being excited, that we think about life in Christ and in our church. I know that sounds really crazy, but it's true. What? Also, another thing yeah. I like um, about school is listening to my brother complain about oatmeal every single day. Oh, no. I love oatmeal. It's the best. So when we're thinking about big events in our lives, sometimes they're always and feel stressful, not just for kids going to school, but even for grown-ups and even for people who have lived a long time. Things like having to go to the doctor when you're worried about something, or even things like having someone in your life who is having big transitions or changes, even when they're sick, or even when you lose someone who has died. And in those moments, there is a lot for us to be um, worried about and be sad about and to pray about. And there's also wonderful things for us to think ahead about. And in all those moments, God will meet us in our place. God will meet us with our joy and be joyful with us. God will meet us in our sorrow and be sad with us. And God will meet us in our worry and walk with us as we are a little bit afraid, but also helping us feel like we have safety. So just so you know, it's not just about when we're in this building, but whenever we're in our life and we're feeling different things, we can remember that even if we don't think of it first, God is with us at all times, in all ways, through all things. That's kind of a big thing, isn't it? I think so too. Let's say a prayer about getting ready for school. I'll say a little bit and you repeat it. Dear God, we are grateful for summer and we're excited for school. Walk with us as we get ready for all these new things. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, you guys, you're so brave to come up here with me, and I sure like talking with you every Sunday. Thanks for being here. I bet in next week and the next week after that, we're going to start having lots of friends back because, you know, vacation time is about over. Thank you. See you next week. Please pray with me. O oh God, connect us to you through your word to, you, to us this day, that we may grow in you through the life in your spirit you provide. Amen. Our initial scripture reading comes from the 15th chapter of the gospel according to John, where we, he, where we hear Jesus speaking to his followers on the night before his death about the importance of their being connected to him. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn also to the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, starting with the 25th verse. Throughout this chapter on which we have been focused during August, uh, there are instructions for the church in order to help it be, help us be, the church of Jesus Christ. So then, putting away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with your neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Those who steal must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor doing good work with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is good for a building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've always been impressed by those who could imitate others well. When I was young, Rich Little was an impressionist I would see on television. He was deemed the person of a thousand voices. He used particular quotes for which certain famous people were known, and with some stylistic gestures, you knew when he was impersonating Jimmy Stewart, Richard Nixon, John Wayne or Carol Channing. I guess as an impressionist, he chose people who had distinctive voices that would be recognized. Of course, he didn't look like any of those people, but he definitely sounded like them. Now, when actors portray a historical character, they not only have to um, get the voice and quotes and gestures right, they also hope to bear a keen resemblance to the person they are portraying. Among those who rate such performances, high on the list include Ben Kingsley as Mohandas Gandhi, Daniel Day-Lewis as Abraham Lincoln, Robert Downey Jr. as Charlie Chaplin, Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher, Helen Mirren as Queen Elizabeth, Jamie Foxx as Ray Charles, and Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury. Did you see any of those performances? We've been focusing on the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians during this August sermon series that explores who we are called to be as part of the Church of Jesus Christ. I was speaking of those who have been good at emulating others because there is this interesting phrase toward the end of our Ephesians reading, calling upon us as people of God to be imitators of God. An initial thought might be that an attempt to imitate God is the height of arrogance. I was reminded of the quote from Oscar Wilde that many people quote only in part. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. 
our limited human abilities or mediocrity, if you will, cannot really imitate the greatness of God. We obviously don't have anywhere near the power that God does. In this life, our years are short, and that is not true for God. I dare say that our motives are always less than pure, which also keeps us from approximating who God is. When we imitate someone, we look to their words and their actions in order to model their behavior. This author from Ephesians says that we can look to the example of Christ, the incarnation of our God who once walked among us and is still present with us through the Holy Spirit to be our model. However, there are other human inclinations that can keep us from being who we are called to be as the Church of Jesus Christ, that keep our imitation of God far from what it could be. Among the first guidance given in the, in the Ephesians passage is for the Church to put away falsehood and to speak the truth. The Church ought to be the place where truth can be spoken the difficult truths about our world and about ourselves, and the gracious truth about the God who has redeemed us. We are, however, rather skilled in using a self-justifying excuse of speaking the truth as a cover for our efforts to manipulate, retaliate, and tear down others. The vices to avoid are particularly those that are expressed in destructive speech. All these things that would tear down relationships have no place in the church, and they are contrary to the Spirit's intent, not only because they impede our ability to engage in the mission to which God has called us, but because they are a failure to reflect Christ himself, who is the foundation of this new life. The passage also addresses anger. There are times when anger is not only understandable, but also appropriate. However, we also ought to recognize that anger long held, or reasons for anger going unaddressed, are disruptive conditions and can quickly become corrosive in the community that God has called for. The exhortation not to grieve the Spirit of God locates the source of proper Christian behavior in God's identity rather than in convention, custom, or culture. Imitating God in our Christian life together is both motivated by and modeled after divine behavior, most specifically God's forgiveness and love in Christ. This means that the falsehood, anger, theft, evil talk, bitterness, wrangling, slander, malice, all of which are forbidden in the church, are not merely destructive or unseemly behaviors, but rather are evidence that we are imitating something or someone other than God. How do we put aside our negative behaviors and live as we are called to be as the Church of Jesus Christ? Our reading from the Gospel of John is instructive here. It uses vine and branch imagery, which would resonate with people from the Middle East as a place where grapes are grown. Christ identifies himself as being like a vine to which we are branches when we are connected to him, when we gain our life from him, then we, with the care of the gardener God, can live fruitful lives. Lives that show the grace and love of God, who we are seeking to imitate. We, as branches, bear fruit not by squeezing it out of ourselves, but because we are extensions of the vine, Jesus Christ. I'll just point out that branches don't live off their own fruit. The fruit is for someone else, which feeds, if you will, into our connection with Christ's love being lived out as fruitful love for others. 
as we are connected to and share Christ's love, we grow in the possibility of actually being able to imitate God. This growth in and through being connected to Jesus Christ does not happen immediately. It is a process that calls to mind these words from Martin Luther. He writes, This life, therefore, is not godliness, but the process of becoming godly. Not health, but getting well. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way. The process is not yet finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. I spoke earlier about impressionists and actors. Moving toward being able to imitate God is less about an ability to act than an ability to react to the right thing. When we react to the grace and love we have experienced in the person of Jesus Christ, when we connect ourselves to his ways, it will lead to a vitality for us as part of the church of Jesus Christ. When we model our behavior after Christ's, the way a child models her behavior after a parent, we are modeling our behavior after God. We are imitating the divine. And that will lead to a way of being that not only leaves an impression on us, but on others as well. May it be so. Amen.
invite you to remain standing as we say together the affirmation of faith that we find in our bulletins. This affirmation of faith is a portion of a brief statement of faith, one of our Presbyterian confessions. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator, ignoring God's commandments we violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. You may be seated. Join with me in a spirit of prayer. We come before you this day, O God, amazed at how time moves on. The weather is still warm, but the school calendars indicate to us that summer is coming to a close. Give thanks for opportunities and institutions that enable positive learning. We do lift up to you school administrators, teachers, professors, students of all ages as the new school year begins. We ask for safe conduct that would embrace each learning environment. Give sensitivity and patience to each teacher as they try to ena enable each student to attain their potential. Allow each school to become a supportive community where there is much encouragement and goodwill. As summer ends for us, we are aware of many climate extremes in various places which are impacting so many. We lift up those who are impacted by drought in parts of our country, but also in parts of Europe and China. We lift up those who are fighting wildfires in the, North, in the Northwest. Bless those who are impacted by floods in Texas, Mississippi, and also in Pakistan. Gracious God, we give thanks for the ministry of Jesus Christ, who brought hope to the distressed, promise to the despairing, and healing to the afflicted. As Christ is the vine, you name us the branches and send us forth to bear much fruit. Let your love lead us to be more forgiving and add to love the discipline to be a reconciling force in the world. Amid tensions caused by misunderstanding, suspicion, or lack of trust, send your spirit of insight and hope. Let love lead us to be more daring. Give us the boldness to speak out on behalf of the voiceless. Give us the courage to, to venture even into difficult places in which we are not in control. Fill us with the confidence that you will not desert us as we seek to follow your will. Give us the faith to make Christ supreme in our lives. Help us translate our words of confession into acts of compassion, our desire to be faithful into deeds of obedience. 
work now in and through us so others might behold your love. With gratitude for the one who embodied your love in all he said and did, we follow the lead of our Lord in praying as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We become more like God when we share freely of ourselves with others. Let us serve God through the giving of our tithes and offerings.
Join with me in prayer. O oh God, we give to tell the world your good news in Christ. As you have loved us, we give ourselves in love for all your people. May we glorify you through, your, through our discipleship. Amen. As we desire to be more like Jesus, as we are connected to him and through him connected to one another, we can lead fruitful lives. Go forth from this place with joy, with love, as messengers of peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and even forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. 